Motion, motion, motion. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, I messed up, but it's all good. It's all good. I am loving all of you in the room this morning. So come on in the room, y'all. Come on in the room. I see you, Deborah Johnson. Good morning to you. Shardinia, good morning to you. Regina Shorts, good morning. Rosanna, good morning to you. Shirley Nicholson, good morning. And I pray hubby is doing much better. Uh, Adrian, good morning, good morning, good morning. Jackie, good morning. Marion Jackson, good morning. Tracy Newme, good morning. And I pray you are feeling well uh, today. Y'all, it's just, it's Thursday. It's our Friday, as you know, and this is Town Hall Thursday. We're going to have some fun today. Um, remember, Danielle, what's up? Remember, 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 remember the moment you stop communicating with me, the segment is over. And also to all of our podcast listeners, thank y'all for keeping me on. They're like, you keep forgetting us. Um, good morning to you. Thank you for hanging out. And then all of our LinkedIn viewers. We do have some LinkedIn viewers. Uh, they're normally at their office. They're at their desk, so they're not able to chat. But we know that you're here, so good morning to you as well. Y'all, today is Thursday. It is Thursday, October the 10th, 2024. I am your host, Gail Dudley. This is News in Motion. Listen, if you know anybody you think want to come hang out with us, be sure to let them know. Make sure uh, you share, you tag, you give us a thumbs up to get that algorithm going. That will be great. All right, y'all, here's your question for this morning. Here's your question for this morning. Um, as we are still praying for all the uh, um, individuals in the pathway of uh, Hurricane Milton, uh, it did make landfall. Uh, late last evening. Um, it did not hit uh, Tampa direct hit as they thought it was going to. It still hit them, but as they thought it was going to, and the storm surges are not as high as they had once thought. Now, y'all don't get this twisted. I believe the prayers of the righteous availeth much, and I believe those of us who are praying died that sucker down a little bit. Look, hey, super, prayer is our superpower, right? So um, we want to continue to pray for them. What's up, Latrice Jones? You like my earrings, Latrice? Anyway, anyway, and by the way, Latrice, I could have sold that paparazzi necklace at that wedding in Nashville last weekend, and I could have made a whole lot of money. Um, next time I wear a piece, I'm going to have your cash app right there so that people can just order on spot. I'm telling you, that necklace, and I don't know if you saw the, um, the picture of me in the car, um, and that, I don't know, it's a hundred and something comments. People want that necklace. I said, that was last year's or two years ago necklace. I said, this necklace is the bomb.com. Yes, girl, prayers of the righteous. Yes, Rosanna, prayers, prayers, prayers. All right, y'all, here's our first question for today before we get into the news. Um, this will lead us into the news. If you had access, and I want y'all to participate. If you had access to $1 billion, that's what it'd be, $1 billion, how would you spend the money? Come on, y'all. Please, 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 please flood the chat with your answer. And I'm going to take my time because I want to hear from you. I know there's a slight delay. Um, so I'm going to take my time. I have to remind myself of that. Um, normally, I used, I used to have Isaiah in the green room talking about, got to slow down. It just came through on the other side. But I don't have him now. And I, I want y'all to know that young man's doing great things. So I just want to say that. So again, if you had access to one billion, that's what the B dollars. How would you spend the money? Come on, y'all, talk to me this morning. Talk to me this morning. What's up, Kenny Stanley? So good to see you. How seminary, Kenny? We miss you, y'all. Don't forget, Kenny Stanley's on every Saturday uh, at 6.30. Tell me if I'm wrong. I believe it's 6.30 right here on News and Motion. Y'all need to follow. Y'all need to follow him. Y'all need to follow him and follow the work that he's doing. Uh, Latrice says, if I had access to one billion, I'm buying land. Okay, I see you. You're buying land. You're buying land. All right, come on, y'all. What, what would you do? And this is moving into the news. If you had access to one billion dollars, how would you spend the money? Tracy Newme said, I would, I will build homes, plural, with the nest. 
Okay, come on, y'all. Come on, flood this, flood this, flood this for me this morning. This is a participatory type uh, uh, platform. So y'all know y'all got to participate with us. Y'all got to participate with us. Yo, I had someone ask me the question while you're putting your answers in here. They said, you've been doing this for four years. Hey, what's up, uh, Fred Jones? They're like, you've been doing this for four years. They're like, why don't you have like hundreds of thousands of people following you? I said, because we're a community. And I said, and you know, I believe that God is blocking the, the toxic people. And I said, um, I said, but I actually love it because there's a direct connect. I said, but the replays, they're not in that number. I said, but the replay are the replays are in the thousands. And I said, we also have our audio listeners where you do not see their numbers up on the screen. But I want us to get so beyond numbers. Numbers, it's, it's really the engagement that's important, not the numbers. And I wish we could sh shift our mindset from that. Um, all right, so Fred Jones says, um, I, I, Fred Jones said, good morning. I buy the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, all right. Kenny says, seminary is good, enjoying uh, his fall break. Yeah, y'all are on fall break. Jackie said, I donate to churches that are actively helping the community. Y'all did find my glasses, so let me put them on. Um, they were in my car. You know, when I travel, I just be throwing stuff everywhere. Regina Short says, invest in affordable housing, such as tiny home communities. I'm loving this conversation, y'all. Uh, Rosanna Bivin says, family, God works in home and farm for homeless cats and dogs. I would also help the vets. Okay. Tracy Newman said, flip the money and invest. What's up, Kim Edmondson? Marion Jackson said, um, be a resource for young people aging out of the foster system. Um, I actually need to talk to you about that. I had someone, no joke. Now, this is this is why I asked the questions that I asked, because we are the community. Uh, Marion, we need to talk. Um, I can't do it today or tomorrow, but probably next Monday. I have someone who's trying to build um, homes for um, children who are aging out of foster care systems. And because you said this, let's talk, because maybe you are a connector in that, y'all. This is why I do what I do. All right, y'all. So that was today's question. If you had access to $1 billion, how would you spend the money on this town hall Thursday? Well, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, candidate for president Kamala Harris, uh, has raised $1 billion, that's with the B dollars, since entering the presidential race. That is unheard of in that short period of time. Vice President Kamala Harris, this is coming uh, straight out of CNN, presidential camp, I'm sorry, out of the Washington Post, forgive me, um, presidential, presidential campaign operation crossed a $1 billion fundraising thresh, threshold in September, two months after she took over the Democratic Party 2024 uh, race, um, according to two people familiar with the numbers. The figures include money raised by the campaign committee itself and by a campaign affiliate joint fundraising committee and also collects cash for the Democratic Democratic uh, National uh, Committee and state parties. Um, polling, though, shows the race uh, pretty much by balance between Kamala Harris and a former guy in, a, in, in the King swing states uh, that will ultimately decide the 2024 election. Now, y'all, it says it normally takes about a year to 13 months to raise that kind of money. So it sends the message that people are hopeful, they are excited, they want to uh, stand behind her. It also shows unity. I don't want you all to miss this. This also shows unity. And the reason I say it shows unity, because people on both sides of the aisle, including those in the middle, Green Party, Libertarian Party, No Label Party, they're all coming together. When you look at the um, at the report, there's people from all from every party giving to her party, y'all. That's unity. That's the power of unity. Cheryl, good morning. Yes, Kim Edmondson, one billion. She said, I would quietly invest in building a self-sufficient community for friends and family. I hear you. And I did get your email. I haven't gotten to it to read through everything, but I will get back to you. Uh, Kenny Stanley said, that's a lot of zeros. Kenny, we miss you here in the morning. We know you in school. We know you in school. So y'all, that's, I think that's the power of unity. Okay, so let me keep going. All right, this is Town Hall, so y'all know I'm excited. Um, now, speaking of money, speaking of money, 
Melinda French Gates launches a $250 million women's health fund. Say what? Yeah. CNN is reporting. Um, she is shedding more light on her $1 billion plan to promote women's rights. This is a plan of hers, announcing a new $250 million fund to improve women's mental and physical health. The billionaire philanthropist uh, launched what you call, what she calls Action for Women's Health, a fund through her organization, Pivotal Ventures. Now on her webpage, it talks about the funding and what, we, what one can do. So I want to encourage any of you, any of you who may have a nonprofit in this area, a nonprofit in mental health, a nonprofit when it comes to women. Uh, uh, and, 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 and Latrice, I thought about you. Uh, so hear me out. I hope you're still on here. Latrice, I thought about, and I don't, I'm not telling you what to do, girlfriend. I know we just had many conversations, but I started immediately thinking about what about autistic women and how could funds from your nonprofit help with women who are autistic? See, this is how, this is, this, this is called a visionary. When I see something, I'm thinking, my mind is never stopping. So Latrice, I thought about you, autistic women. Could you go and tap into this $250 million? Yes, you can, you can, you can, you can. Um, others of you, Deb, I thought about you. Deb, are you still on here? I thought about you, Deborah. I don't want you, and then when I call out different names, I'm not excluding anyone. What I'm doing, and y'all, this is free content that you're getting, okay? People pay thousands of dollars to get what I'm about to share right here, okay? Deb, I thought about you, um, your, your, your uh, movement of writing. Talking about men, women's mental and physical health, you could tap in and, and um, uh, seek, in, seek for this $250 million and talking about women writing. To, to help with their mental health and their physical health. And I thought about this, Deborah, arthritis in, in your joints, in your fingers, and how maybe writing can help. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to think. We got to think outside the box in this community, y'all. Melinda Gates has $250 million in this particular venture. She has over a billion dollar plan, okay? With a B, with a B. Now we got Kamala Harris just raised over a billion dollars. That was in September. We're uh, halfway through October, so imagine that. And now we have Melinda Gates talking about a billion dollar plan. Y'all, we have to figure out how to tap into this money, which means your mind has to shift. Lori Williams, so, uh, I'm glad you just popped in here. Women's mental health and physical health, dance. Hello, somebody. You can dance. So y'all, where people are paying coaches to give what I just gave you right here, Listen, this is why we do News in Motion, okay? So we have to expand our thinking. Going back to Kamala Harris, that, that billion dollars in two months did not come from one party. It came from across the board. I saw the report, all right? So unity. So unity is on the ballot. Unity is happening in our communities right now. Here's your opportunity to tap into unity. So think of your business. All right, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. If you have a business, put it in the chat. Audio people, just text me, email me. I will respond to you individually. Put it in the chat, what you're trying to do. I'm going to sit here and tell you. Yeah, it's, that's my background, y'all. I'm going to sit here and tell you. You're getting free advice this morning. This is Town Hall Thursday. Tracy Newman said, help me with pain management. I will be a client. All right, so who's dealing with physical therapy or pain management? Tracy Newman is saying, I need that service. Okay, so y'all, when y'all see that somebody needs a service, your job is to solve their problem. So how are you going to solve Tracy Newmi's challenge of pain, sir, to pain management? Now, I want y'all to think beyond what you see, all you business people, pain management. Could she do some dancing, Lori? Could she do some writing? Could she do X, Y, Z? Kim Edmondson, your name is on here too. Let's look at investment. Let's look at finances. So many women, people in general, here I'm coming off of Melinda Gates, and that's why I'm talking about women, but we can talk about men as well. So many women are trying to get to deal with their financial situation. 
women who may be going through divorce, women may who may be becoming empty nesters and they don't know what to do, women who may have lost loved ones, women you fill in the blank. They're trying, they're, they're having trouble, even health trouble, because they're in debt. They don't know how to do what to do with their money. Well, um, Kim, uh, Kim Edmondson, you could probably tap into this money too. And I'm sharing all these things because when I see things like this, I go to the website. I go and read what they're talking about. This will be in the Friday Rundown. So if you are not a subscriber to the Friday Rundown, which is free, go to www.gaildudley.com. Just quickly do it. It comes out on Friday, so you have to do it today before 3 p.m. because I have it set in time. I see you, Judy Neal. Uh, fibromyalgia. Thank you, Tracy, for being um, uh, vulnerable and sharing that. Shirley Nicholson says, I build a small facility for seniors where they can generally be taken care of by people who really want to take care of them. That's what I'm talking about. Lori says, yes, I could see my nonprofit Evolve Productions incorporated creating a production that brings the challenges and solutions to life through dance and drama thank you y'all this is what we do now there's others of you out here who can write the proposals okay the reason why i don't say write the grants because i used to do this work no 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 the grant is the money okay all right philanthropists the grant the grants are the money Okay, that's that's the money's behind. What you're writing is a proposal to get the grant. So even having an understanding and the definition of that is key. You're writing proposals for the grant money. Okay, that's how you have to look at it. So what's the proposal? So here's another petal unfolding from Everbloom. This is all of our five E's. Our five E's are empower, encourage, and equip, engage, and embrace. Now, this these are the foundation of everything, every interaction, project, and initiative under Everbloom, five E's. And the reason I'm slow walking is because my website has to catch up to everything I'm saying. The website's not quite ready to unveil everything. And so I'm gonna talk about engage today. When I saw this piece from Melinda Gates, engage when it comes to Everbloom, and many of you know this because you participated in this probably about 10 years ago when I first launched this under um, Ministry in Motion. And engage is to serve, give, and to spa. As y'all know, if you received Ready Publication, we had a serve, give, spa page every time that publication came out. Now, if this is the concept that encouraged community engagement by serving others, by giving back, and then by refueling through, re through relaxation and self-care. That's to serve. You're gonna serve people, you're gonna give, you're gonna donate, and then you're going to refuel, you're gonna relax, you're gonna go to the spa. And embracing to refuel and maintain balance, which means this is a part when we launch the whole thing come January the 3rd, 2025, we're gonna go back to doing those small groups going to serve a community, we're going to give back, and then we're gonna to go to the, to the spa and have a great time. So that's again, something we could do. So that can also fall under this women's mental health and physical health piece. That's how we do it. Deborah Johnson said, I have been told by medical professionals that anything that ends with A-L-G-I-A has an emotional uh, root. Writing a mental health therapy can help greatly. There's that. I love, this is why we do this community. Um, so now we want to um, put that out there. Uh, let's see, Kim Edmonds says, do you have to be a nonprofit to apply for the grants? Now, when I went to their website, Kim, and again, um, you can Google Pivotal, P-I-V-O-T-A-L, Ventures, that's under the Melinda Gates, Melinda French Gates Foundation. There were both nonprofit and profit. There were, were co corporations and companies could also tap into that. And the Pivotal Ventures would become a partner or collaborative person for that. Um, uh, Gwen, what's up? I told y'all LinkedIn's in the house. Good morning, family. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, but you're here now. Gwen, you and uh, Chante, I need to put this out there. Y'all need to check out the Melinda French Gates uh, they're doing, she's doing $250 million fund to improve women's mental, mental and physical health. So check that out. That's under Action for Women's Health, a fund through her organization, Pivotal 
ventures. Now, here's the other thing that I want to share with you all, talking about community and unity. Imagine if we all went in together for this thing. Yeah, seriously. And companies look for that. Foundations look to see where's the collaboration and partnership. Yeah, yeah. Deborah says, inbox me if you're interested in the workshop. Inbox Deborah, y'all. She's putting it out there. Inbox her if you're interested in her workshop. All right, y'all. So I want to keep going. I want to keep going. Um, Kamala Harris has put out some of her information um, talking about uh, Kam uh, Harris and Walsh policy. Home care will be covered for seniors. Interesting title. So I had to go digging, right? Well, strengthen Medicare and provide home care for seniors and those with disabilities. Seniors will be able to stay in their homes instead of going to a nursing home. Care will be provided by qualified home care workers and certified family caregivers. And lift up care workers with access to better wages. All right, all oh, that sounds so good. Oh my God, it sounds so good. But let's talk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this the opposite direction. So lift up care workers with access to better wages. Absolutely. Lift them up, pay them. Pay the people what they're worth. Okay, pay them. So that one, cool. Care will be provided by qualified home care workers and certified family caregivers. Let's talk about this. Because when I see that piece, which I think is fabulous, what's the framework around it? Y'all, this is town hall meeting, so let's talk. What are some things that you have dealt with or heard from your family and, or friends, coworkers, who have been challenged by healthcare with their seniors? Um, I'll, I'll start, I'll start. As you all know, my mom's bedridden and we've had people in and out and if they don't vibe with her or us, they can't stay because they have to have the temperament. They have to understand where she is mentally. They have to understand where she is emotionally. They have to understand where she is physically. We also learned that it's best. My mom responds better with males than females. I don't know why that is, but it is. And, and she responds differently with them. She can, she'll, she'll laugh with them. She'll get in a conversation with them. Women, I'll be like, mom, you're just being so mean, like for real, but she's mean to us too sometimes. But, but I thought about this and said, qualified care workers, that should also include how are they as um, beyond their skills of physical therapy and, and nursing and that part, what else do they bring to the table? What's their personality? What's their temperament? Um, what's their communication style? Uh, do they have an understanding? Are they comfortable in certain areas? All of that, I believe, should be a part of it. Y'all, 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 either flow with me or not. Y'all gotta talk to me. Y'all know that y'all know the rules. The moment you stop talking to me, the segment is over. So let's talk about that. As you're putting in the chat for that, I'm gonna go to the next one. Seniors will be able to stay in their homes instead of going to a nursing home. Again, this is a part of the Harris Wasp policy. I look for one for the other guy. He don't have one, so I can only talk about this one. Okay. Because I want to be fair and balanced. I want to be fair and balanced. Rodessa, good morning. So seniors being able to stay in their home. Now, my mom is in her home. She was in a nursing facility, but it wasn't working. It, it just wasn't working. And we're the kind of family, you're going to always see us. And so when the staff started getting frustrated that we were always there, we had to let them know we're not going anywhere. And why are you so frustrated that we're here? Like, what's the disconnect? How would you be treating her if we weren't here? So I think it's great that seniors will be able to stay in their homes instead of going to a nursing home. But what comes along with that? Will the will the beds be provided? We had to pay for we had to buy the bed. Okay. And 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 Medicare wasn't taking care of that. Isn't that crazy? So we also got to talk about the Medicare rules and the policies and what they pay and the budget and the insurance and everything else. Latrice Chong says family caregivers need adequate training to to be care workers and paid we are grateful to have isaiah as a care worker for isaac absolutely absolutely latrice so we also have to put that bill in place um what the budget in place excuse me what's all included in this and what does that look like also the home the home because my parents live in an older home uh, on the near east side a uh, central ohio because they live in an older home the steps to get upstairs are narrow. So a bed could not, 
they could not get her upstairs. So we had to uh, um, tear down the dining room and put her there and then have um, uh, dividers around her bed so that she still has somewhat of a privacy. And um, then during the day, we take the dividers down. But even with that, are we considering, okay, it's great, you want them to go home, but what type of tools and resources and, and people can we have when they come home? Great policy, I love everything she's saying here, but the question is how? And here's another opportunity for those of us who are small business owners or entrepreneurs or looking for something to do. We gotta get beyond the arts and writing and um, um, uh, investment and look at, well, what else? What about truck driving? What about concrete? What about bridge building? What about, uh, did y'all see the man that has the laundry in an old school bus? If that ain't the bomb, it's out there, y'all just Google it. He got real creative. So he takes his, his school bus filled with washers and dryers to different communities, charge a nominal fee for people to come out and wash their clothes. Hello, somebody. That's smart. That's smart. We got to think outside the box. Um, Gwen says, um, I am back on. I had to shift platform. She's so afraid. She said LinkedIn kept, was frozen and dropped her off. Oh, I'm glad you back, girl. I'm glad you back. And then the other one, strengthen Medicare and provide home care for seniors and those with disabilities. That's a big one. And that has to be strengthened. As someone who's dealing with that with her parents right now, that's just a mess. The red tape is ridiculous. It takes years to get anything done. And by the time you get there, you know, it's over. So that needs to be strengthened. So I want to hear from you. How can this work? And I want you to share your thoughts. Uh, Latrice Jones says, educating the public about the resources available to modify homes for the elderly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gwendolyn said, um, working with our uh, geriatric angels require more than just having a good bedside manner. I, 100 girls, 1,000 actually. There has to be some understanding of their mental status as well as their physical and emotional space. 100. And I think that's something that we can do. Another collaborative effort, y'all, all over. I don't care where you're located in the United States or even abroad. We have to come together because there's someone out here who can do that educational piece. There's someone out here who can do that training for that. Kenny Stanley said, I thought about a mobile barber bus. You better stop thinking and get that bus going. Listen, y'all, send uh, help. Let's help invest. Philanthropists, all right, investors, let's help invest in Kenny Stanley to get a mobile barber bus. Boom. That's why we have news in motion so we can share things like this. Y'all, could y'all imagine that? Kenny Stanley going around cutting heads in different locations, charging a nominal fee, or maybe he's going to charge more, which I get that, so that people can get their hair cut. Everyone can't get to places anymore. So that's another thing. That's another thing we can look at and we can help build other people up. So y'all, this collaborative effort here. So as what Gwen is sharing, what Latrice is saying, educating the public, who's going to hold the space? So I want y'all to see this. I'm giving y'all some serious information this morning. I charge people big money for this. See, but y'all the community, so I always give to y'all because I love y'all and y'all continue to support. That's why I love it. So let's take what Latrice Jones is saying this morning. This is Town Hall Thursday, okay? It's not Workshop Wednesday, it's Town Hall Thursday. But let's take what Latrice Jones just raised. And we're going to combine it with Gwen Wright, Gwendolyn Wright. I'm almost called you doctor. You are a doctor, aren't you? Dr. Gwendolyn Rice. Let's talk about this. Um, educational piece. So you have to house it somewhere. More often than not, we go to a library, which is cool. We'll go to um, a church, which is cool. But what about someone building a facility for community events where they're not all crazy expensive? Gwen said, no. Okay, let's just say not yet, Gwen. Let's just say not yet, not no. Um, uh, having a facility where education can happen, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one educational source or it's a group setting, whatever that may be. If it's overnight, imagine having that place 
where someone, that's their business. And we as business owners or community people are going into that business and we're, we are helping them grow. Then we have facilitators who are training uh, the content to the community. So we have content creators, we have facilitators, uh, but then we have the curriculum designers, okay? Do y'all see all this? That's happening. Then we have to have the caterers, okay? Then we have to have the cleaning crew, okay? Y'all see where I'm going with this? Then we have to have the transportation because people may not have transportation and the public bus system may not get them there because it's going to be on this uh, uh, secluded place or in the inner city or in the suburbs, wherever we want to place this. So then you have to have transportation. Well, we don't want to miss out on the ADA. So we want to have transportation with uh, wheelchair lifts so that people can come. Do you see how many businesses are a part of that? That's unity. That's community. Okay, so that's where I'm trying to get us as news and motions to start thinking. This is a part of Everbloom, another petal just unfolded. This collaborative effort. Lori Williams Wallace said, uh, a facility, that's a dream of mine. Well, stop dreaming, girl. Y'all, we can start investing in that too. Investment. Let's talk about investment for a moment. Kim Edmondson, let's talk about investment for a moment. We're so quick to buy things that we're missing out on investment opportunities. So even going back to uh, Vice President, now presidential candidate Kamala Harris raised $1 billion, over $1 billion exactly, uh, uh, um, to be honest, within two months. Because people believe in that. Well, it's time for us to start to believe in what we're doing as well. While in Nashville, I went to this place, um, me and my friends walking late night because we heard the store was open. I didn't know if I was in Nashville, uh, New York Times Square, or if I was in New Orleans, okay? This street called Broadway, downtown Nashville, maybe y'all know about it, Have this place has this place called the Boot Barn. Yeah, every kind of cowboy boot you can think of in this place. And it was stickety stack packed in there. And I started thinking, I found this one in Columbus, Ohio too, y'all, in Hilliard. I went there yesterday. But anyway, I started thinking, like, wait, what? A boot barn. Well, I started looking at the history. How did this happen? Where did this come from? The developers, the investors, how that grew. And now it's the talk of the town. Like, what? Like, any and everybody was in the boot barn. And they were in there with drinks and everything else, buying boots. Buying boots from maybe $69 to $1,000 and something dollars. Every boot you could think of was in the boot barn. What a concept. What a concept. So I'm going to move a little bit to the inspirational message and we're out of here. And I really want to go longer, but I know this is Thursday and y'all got things to do. Rodessa said, very true. Rodessa said, I'm currently working on doing an adult care facility. Boom, there it is. Uh, Gwendolyn says, popping off for appointment. Girl, go do your thing. Self-care, y'all. Be blessed, Gail. Latrice, we talk. All right, girl, go do what you got to do. Um, Latrice Jones says, stickity stack pack. Never heard that before. I just kind of put those words together. You know, Gail Dudley will say anything, right? So I was, so I'm going to move into the inspirational message. Before I do, let me talk about Google real quick. Um, the Justice Department is proposing to break up Google back to Unity. Y'all, this whole thing on this town hall is Unity today. Um, and force it to sell parts of its business. The proposal, one of the several recommendations submitted in late uh, in a late Tuesday court filing, comes after a judge this summer found Google holds a monopoly in online search and texting advertisement. Um, they go on and on and on. I'll talk more about this next week. But the reason I wanted to put this in here um, is to talk about the fact that even Amazon, it's a monopoly. It's a monopoly. And they're starting to break these things up, okay? Why, and so many people have been afraid. Now I'm going to the um, inspirational message. So many people have been afraid of doing something because somebody else is already doing it. Get over that. There's nothing new. Okay, get over that. Get over that. Do you. There will be people who will come to you for business and people who will go to other folks for business. So get over that. This is not a competition. Have such a boldness and a confidence about yourself 
that you realize you're not competing. You're not competing. Now, on the other hand, if you are friends with somebody, don't undercut them. Have the conversation with them, okay? And if they're mature, they'll be like, girl, do what you need to do. Guy, do what you need to do. How can I come along to serve you? How can, do you need anything? I got, instead of you reinventing the wheel, I have some forms that you might want to use and adapt to whatever it is that you're doing. We're not competing. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Kamala Harris race, $2 billion, uh, $1 billion within two months, okay? Melinda Gates have a $1 billion plan. Okay, so we got to get over this competition stuff. Get over it. Get over yourself. Get over it. So in Unity, when I was thinking about this and thinking about all this monopoly and everything that's happening, I said, here's an opportunity for us to come together in Unity and to work together and to apply for proposals together. I've been talking about this since we've been on News and Motion, so that's been four years. And very seldom do people follow through. I have shared with you all things uh, about here's how to apply to decorate in the White House. Here's how to apply to get some of this money from FEMA. Here's how to apply to be a part of this uh, infrastructure bill. Here's how to apply. We're constantly putting this information out there, but nobody's asking to collaborate. Uh, trust me, y'all, we can do this if we would collaborate and come together. So what's your business idea? Here on News in Motion, we did a, a sheet. We asked people to, to turn in their business. Yeah, we do this for free. We asked for people to turn in their business information. We're putting together a directory. We received, I think, 10 people. That was free. And it goes out to thousands of people. So why wouldn't you do that? We're not doing that now. But why, 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 why wouldn't you do that? We have to get beyond our insecurities our jealousy, being envious of other people, and do what you do. Do what you do. Stop asking for permission to do it. Stop sitting back. My husband and I were talking to this couple the other day, and this gentleman has been doing something year after year after year. He kind of like took a break during COVID. And then yesterday we were talking with, we were speaking with him, and he said, well, I don't think I'm going to do that because brother so-and-so said he's interested in doing something similar, and I don't want him to think that I'm competing with them. I'm sitting across the table. I was like, what? And the wife said, look at Gail's face. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, you've been doing that for a long time. He said, yeah, but I took a break. But yeah, you're coming back. So what that he's doing it? Who cares? You still have a calling. And if God has called you to it, go and do it. Transparent moment, then we're out of here. Trans Y'all know I'm very transparent here. Um, I think it was last week I did an inspirational message on seek God, not opportunities. I think I did that last week or week before. Well, now I want to talk about what I did. On my website, a part of why you see it transforming almost every day now is because about two, two and a half years ago, I scrubbed it of my faith because I was thinking to myself, well, I want to make sure I'm not excluding anybody from coming. And if somebody may not be a follower of Jesus, although I talk about it all the time, I don't want them to think they can't work with me as a client. So I had Molly scrub anything that looks like my faith. God didn't tell me to do that. And why was I scrubbing it? And it's so clear now that Everbloom is coming to be we're putting all my faith back on there because I have nothing to hide. And a lot of it happened. I have posted notes on it. It's because of this book, Inspire, um, because I didn't hide my faith. And, and I had to have a come to Jesus meeting. Like God was like, what are you doing? Are, are, are you embarrassed of me? Why, why are you scrubbing yourself? And, and listen, I did not. What's up, Heather? I cannot share, tell you enough. It's almost as if the money dried up because I was trying to like, let me scrub it, then I'll get the money. The money dried up. I have nothing, I have nothing to hide from you on that. It dried up. I was getting things here and there, but you know, here and there, take care of stuff and then it was gone. And God was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? So now as you start seeing um, gaildutley.com, you'll see the faith coming back in there because that's who I am. My sister-in-law, and some of you on here attended 
um, used to attend these. My sister-in-law said, can we go back to the prayer gatherings? Can we please go back to those? Can we go back to the prayer retreats? She's been asking me that for about four years. We're going back to those with Everbloom. We are. They're going to be done different, but we're going back to those. Um, many of you attended my conference in 2019, which was called uh, When You Don't Know What to Do. Latrice Jones, remember that? When You Don't Know What to Do. It was an amazing, and I had sponsors out the wazoo, but I scrubbed my website of my faith. I have to bring it back. So y'all, seek God, not opportunities, please. And don't hide who you are to try to appease somebody else, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So that was my mistake that I have no problem sharing with you all today. My, 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 Deborah said that conference was amazing. Now I'm not saying this in a boast, but I used to put on some bomb.com conferences, okay? Uh, yeah, that, that one, that one, remember I dreamt about when you don't know what to do and I did everything exactly how the dream was. And that conference, was is basically what I do right now. That conference was amazing. Women's lives changed. Women started businesses that are still running very well today out of that conference, out of that conference. Heather, uh, Mary Jackson says, I agree agencies should probably train caretakers. Uh, Heather says, God first. Lori says, yes, you have. I tried with a few people, no response. We have to move past competition and thing and think what we can do collectively. The impact would be amazing. Deborah said that conference was amazing. Latrice Jones says, I remember that. Jackie says, seek God on opportunities. Kenny Stanley said, Kelly says she remembers. Listen, Kelly, uh, listen, that was the conference, wasn't it? Uh, New Tracy Newmy said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm back with that, I'm back with that. And I shared that because we have to stop doing anything that's not in line with what God has for us. That's the bottom line, y'all. That's the bottom line. Um, I, I want to hear from you all this weekend. Do y'all have y'all have y'all have a job to do? I want to hear from you all this weekend. Go to my website, um, or actually go to my email. Let me see if I can find my email. Go to this email, which is gail at gaildudley.com, and let me know what you're looking for. And I'm going to do my best um, by let's give me to Wednesday to connect with you with the right people. Um, to connect you with the right people. And I'm not saying in a boastful way, you may not see me at things, but I know a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people um, who could help, whether with financial resources, coaching resources. I, 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 I know, what, the, what was that movie? We said, I see people, I know people. So email me, that's gail at gaildudley.com. And I am going to do this now, y'all, I'm only going to give you to the weekend. Don't send it to me on Monday because after Sunday midnight, I'm not going to do it. I got to go back to charging, but I'm going to do that for you all. Um, Deborah said there was so much collaboration between women at that conference. That conference was priceless, Deborah. It was absolutely priceless. When you don't know what to do, I may post some things on my Instagram from that. Um, that was, it was so diverse. Women from all walks of life was, was there. Um, all different kind of backgrounds, socioeconomic status. We were in that in the house. We were at Peace Lutheran Church in Gahanna. We had their entire fellowship hall. We partnered with uh, Chick-fil-A, whether you like them or not, we did. Um, we partnered with other companies as well. Um, yeah, we had, we had speakers that came in from out of town. We had a great time, that conference, a great time. All right, y'all, this has been News Emotion All Week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, again, um, there's that email. Um, Rodessa says she sent it to me in the next hour. You can. I'm not going. I'm not going to respond until probably uh, Monday, Tuesday. I'll get them. All, I'll get all the responses back by Wednesday. I'm kind of like opening a big door here, but I'm I'm free this weekend, so I can do that for y'all this weekend. So um, Gail at, at gaildelly.com, um, and I'll do my best to help you there um, with anything that you may need. Since I'm I'm, I'm in the mood of giving. And by the way, y'all, this is philanthropy. This is philanthropy. We also have to change our mindset on what we think philanthropy is all about. But this right here is philanthropy. All right, y'all, y'all know what I say. Um, uh, stay well, everyone. COVID's out here. COVID's out here. I heard there was an outbreak at the wedding. I'm like, please, Lord, please. No, 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 no. Um, COVID is out here, so y'all stay well. And remember, make some bold moves. 
we're out. Motion, motion, motion. motion. motion.